Welcome aboard, I'm Captain Wayne Canning, Master Boat Builder and Marine Surveyor. Today I'd like to talk about making electrical connections. As a surveyor and consultant, I'm often asked to look into electrical problems on boats, and nine times out of ten, the electrical problems I find are related directly to the connections, not in the wires themselves. The wires themselves almost never go bad, but the problem is always at one end or the other. And a lot of times, the problem is due to a poor terminal. So I'd like to talk about how to make a good, proper, crimp-type connection on your wiring. So let's start by talking about the types of connectors that are available to us. Most crimp connectors are the type with the nylon insulation around them, and they come in different types. This is a ring terminal, and we can see the ring terminals come in different sizes for different size studs. We also have available butt connectors for connecting two wires together. There's also a different variety for spade type for once again making temporary connections where we can plug wires in together and then be able to easily remove them if we need to. The crimp connectors come in different colors for different sizes. Red or pink connectors are for number 22 wire to 16 Blue gauge wire. Blue connectors are for 16 to 14 gauge wire and the yellow connectors are for 12 to 10 gauge wire. We also have some that are for even larger wires and we start the color coding over again. Red being for number 8 wire, blue being for number um, 6 wire, and yellow being for number 4 wire. This is an example of how a lot of these connectors are used. We have the ring terminals to attach to screws. We can see that the butt connector is attaching these two wires together and we have the, the spade and slip type wire and once again these are this is another version of one that can be removed this is a bullet type they call it and they're all insulated we also they also come in two different types as you can see these two are both for the same size stud but you'll notice the insulation on this one looks a little bit different this is a heat shrink type insulation very good for using that in wet locations like installing a bilge pump or something like that. I'll show you how These to These are two butt connectors, one with just standard nylon insulation and one with the heat shrink type insulation. Next, let me show you how to put a um, crimp type connector on the wire. First thing we want to do is strip off a little bit of the end of the wire. We want to strip off about a quarter of an inch of the wire, plus or minus, doesn't have to be exact. Once we've stripped the wire, I like to give it a little twist so that none of them stick out and don't go into the connector. You want to slide the connector over the wire, giving it a little twist. Make sure it sits down there good. There's no strands of wire sticking out. And you want just a little bit of the end of the wire sticking out through the top so you know it's all the way through. The next step is simply just squeeze it with a pair of crimpers so that you crimp it on there nice and tight and that's it that's all there is to that connection that's a nice tight connection and it will stay relatively uh, waterproof um, and that's how you make a proper uh, crimp connection let's take a look at some of the other types here that was your basic ring terminal let's take a look at doing a heat shrink Once again, we have the pink with the heat shrink. We'll slide that on there, give it a little twist so we know it's down on there good. We can crimp that nice and tight. And after you've crimped it, a good idea is to give it a little tug to make sure that that's on there nice and tight. Because sometimes they'll slip off of there if you don't get them crimped on good. We'll take a little heat source here. And we'll just gently heat that heat shrink and you can see it closes down on the wire and that is a nice waterproof The one type of connector we do not want to use is the household type wire nut. The American Boat and the Yacht Council specifically says not to use wire nuts. The reason we don't want to use wire nuts is these are designed to be used with solid, not stranded wire. 
They're designed to twist on there and compress the wire down. With stranded wire, they really cannot compress the wire down properly, and they have a tendency to fall off. Also, being relatively wide on the bottom, when you stick the wire in there, you have a big gap in there where water can get into it. So you do not want to use the household type. The only type of connection that's um, approved by ABYC are crimp type connectors. Soldering is not allowed either. Um, the reason soldering is not allowed is because in the event of overcurrent and heating, the solder can melt out of the connection and cause the connection to get even weaker, creating more heat and more solder will come out of it. So the only time you ever want to use solder is when you're um, making connections for electronic wires on very small wires that are not current carrying. Um, wires that are used for carrying NEMA data or something like that. Very low voltage, very low current. You can solder those, but on any wire that's carrying any current at all, you want to use a crimp type connector. Look at a connector. couple of tricks I use when making crimp type connections. Sometimes you're dealing with smaller wires. This is this happens to be number uh, 14 wire. This is uh, probably I think 18 gauge. Very small wire. Very difficult to work with. Um, you can see the strippers don't even really strip that off very well. So when you have a very thin wire like that, even the small pink connectors are very loose on there and the wire doesn't really fill the, the hole on the inside of that connector very well. So what I'll do is I'll just with my thumbnail just kind of crimp that wire over and you can see I've started to bend it and I'll fold it all the way over itself and that doubles the thickness of the wire. Then when I put the crimp connector on there it's a nice tight fit in there and when I crimp it it will now stay on there and I don't have to worry about that falling off. I even have a little bit of the end of that wire sticking through there, and that's a nice tight connection. <clears throat> Another t common type of um, crimp connector is the fork connector or spade connector. They go by different names. This is, this is the type you get from Home Depot, and it's not a particularly good connector because, as you can see, it's just open on the top. And when I put that in the screw, if the screw loosens up even a little bit, that can fall off. If you can use the full ring terminal, even if the screw loosens up, that's not going to fall off and that's going to stay on there. Another variety of that, and it's a little hard to see on this one, is the, the fork type with little where it's bent on the end. And that'll help stay on the screw as well. What I personally prefer doing is if I absolutely can't remove the screw completely, I'll take a pair of wire cutters and I'll cut that ring terminal just a bit in the middle. Then when I go to put that on the screw, as I slide that on there, I have to kind of force it. And you can see it stays locked on there. It won't fall off. <clears throat> That's a better alternative if you cannot completely remove the screw. And there are some cases where you have to hook a wire up to a fastener and the screw won't come completely out. Okay, hold on. All right, so now we've seen how to make a good crimp type connector. It takes a little bit of practice, but every boat owner should have a nice little kit. You can buy kits at uh, the auto supply store or the marine store that have a bunch of the connectors in them, different sizes, different stud sizes, different types, ring terminals, quick connects, quick disconnects. Um, you can get it all in a little kit, keep it on board. These make the best connections. You'll have fewer problems by using crimp connections, and you'll just have better results all around. In another video, I will talk to you about what are the best tools to use for making connections, and I'm also going to talk about um, proper termination in general, using um, terminal blocks and bus bars and that kind of thing. But we'll just keep it short for now. Thanks.